The Rolls-Royce micro-nuclear reactor has been revealed at the UK Space Conference. And even though it's still in a preliminary design, its implications could be game-changing. The potential output on this type of unit could range up to 10 megawatts. As a comparison, the ISS can provide around 120 kilowatts in direct sunlight. So a fission reactor at several megawatts would be substantially higher than any power source currently in space. However, the question still remains on whether or not this could be launched safely into space and what kind of electrical conversion would this type of unit utilize? Today, we know that conventional reactors control and exploit the power of nuclear fission. They typically utilize uranium for fuel, and these are secured into metal tubes called fuel rods. Multiple rods are used, and an assembly is immersed into water which acts as a coolant and moderator. There are a few different variations, but the most common reactors are the pressurized and boiling variants and they utilize steam to turn a turbine and produce power. One of the largest boiling water reactors is the Kashiwatsuki in Japan, and each unit is around 1100 megawatts. However, this type of power is very expensive, and the infrastructure is quite large. Modern naval warships utilize pressurized variants, where water is transferred to a steam generator and kept under pressure to prevent boiling. This type of system can be minimalized and once again, a steam turbine converts the heat energy into electrical power. Reactor sizes can still measure up to a sizable 160 megawatts, and there is no needed refueling for over 30 years in some of the larger variants. But when it comes to space-based platforms, there's a lot of different complications. Something that just comes out of an Ohio-class submarine, which is over 50 feet long and weighs 2,700 tons, would be problematic to say the least. One of the largest rockets, the SpaceX Starship, can launch 200 tons. So unless it's modular, there is a very big limitation on the size of reactor you can launch into space. And that's not even getting into the kind of power conversion or the safety implications of launching radioactive material. But having said that, we have already launched small-scale nuclear power sources which bypass steam power. The iconic Pioneer 10, launched in 1972, utilized radioisotope thermal generators to reach the edge of the solar system. This is a type of nuclear battery that converts heat of a radioactive material into electricity. This is where the temperature difference between two electrical mediums produces a voltage, but the efficiency of this type of system is really low. It's sub 10%. So you might get a few hundred watts out of this system in space. However, the Pioneer craft were unmanned and they didn't need a lot of power. So this type of source was more than sufficient enough to perform its mission. The next step up in power range would likely be a thermionic reactor. It consists of a hot electrode from which the electrons are vaporized to a colder collector. And typically, these systems can range into a 5 to 20% efficiency. The Topaz reactors was one of the more infamous variants developed by the Soviet Union that was launched into space. In theory, they would be able to operate 3 to 5 years on 26 pounds of fuel and deliver over 5,000 watts of power. And recently, there have been research into thermal isolators which can increase the efficiency of this type of reactor. But the original Topaz weighed over 700 pounds, and this starts to show you how the power scaling affects the weight of the overall reactor. Another alternative measure to transfer the nuclear energy is through a Stirling converter. And ironically, this kind of combines an old school idea with a space age design. One of the more recent projects is the Kilopower from NASA, which is capable of providing 10,000 watts of electrical power. This would be able to run continuously for 10 years. This type of system can transfer the heat through pipes and be regulated through a radiator. At the heart of the system are several Stirling converters, which convert linear motion into electrical power. But it was never extensively tested in space. And so far at this point, we're not even getting close to megawatt power units, which have been tested in space. So when we look at nuclear-based power systems, we have to consider a couple of different things. One is that they relatively have low efficiencies, but there's not really a good power to weight ratio as well. You can have something that can range into the thousands of pounds, but it's not going to produce over 10 kilowatts, and that's a big problem. Another thing too is that you would have to consider about what kind of purpose are you going to use this micronuclear reactor in. 
The ISS produces around 100 kilowatts with its solar electric system. So, as doing direct comparison to a solar electric, it might not make sense, but maybe something on the moon, it could make sense for a civilization or a habitat. Now, the critical question that we all have to ask about this reactor is, what kind of conversion process are they using here to generate electricity? One future technique that might be used is a magnetohydrodynamic generator, otherwise known as MHD. And this would utilize conductive ionized gas, or plasma, as the moving conductor. There is an advantage to this because there are no moving parts, and it has one of the highest theoretical thermodynamic efficiencies. A feasibility study has been performed by NASA to look at a disk generator variant. But as of right now, it's highly conceptual just due to the material requirements. You would have to pulse the plasma and it would have to perform at a very much lower temperature, which means that it would also lack efficiency. The Hall effect would also have to be highly controlled. So as of right now, we do have pathways in developing a micronuclear reactor, but we have yet to implement something that can actually work. More importantly, I would like to know what you think about this design. Is it feasible? Does it make sense? Let me know in the comments, like the video if you enjoyed it, and also make sure to subscribe to my channel.